you wouldn't believe how many prior videos of mine I've looked at to see what's the best location to film in, what's the best lighting, what's the best angle. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. So any of the booktubers, if you're watching and if you've seen any of my previous videos, give me some tips in the comments below. Like I said, I'm totally clueless. Hi booktube, it's Kim at K Becker's Books. This video is my bucket list book list, which implies that these are books that I wanna read before I die. <laughs> that's, that's true and not necessarily supposed to sound morbid, but I just wanted to show you some books that I've had for a long time that I really wanna read, and for whatever reason, I've either avoided them or haven't really gotten to them yet but they're on the list of my exciting books and I really, really, really want to read them. So I'm, I'm going to eventually fit them in soon, hopefully in the next year or two. Um, and there are some that I will be reading almost right away and I'll, I'll point those out to you. So I've divided them into categories and I'm going to start with classics. So for the pile of classics that I have, I'm not gonna go into really detailed description of the books on any of the books, maybe here and there. But if I did that, we'd be here for a couple hours because the pile is big. So the, the classics are well known enough so that I'm not gonna have to go into any big description. I've talked about this one already. This is Moby Dick by Herman Melville. It's, it's a bucket list book for sure. This one that I had mentioned in a previous video, I think it was the Nimrod tag. This is my mother's actual copy that she had. She always wanted to read it and she passed away, oh, it'll be six years in September. So I ended up taking her copy of Moby Dick for my own, but I definitely want to read that in my lifetime. The next one is Henry James' Portrait of a Lady. I've never read any Henry James novels. I've seen miniseries and all that stuff, but I definitely, Definitely want to, I've heard great things about this one in particular, so I want to get to that. Last March, I read Middlemarch um, for March of the Mammoths, and I also own Daniel Deronda by George Eliot. Um, you'll see the things that these books have in common, or a lot of them, are is their length. These are all big, pretty big, chunky fat books. So that could be one of the main reasons why I have not read them yet is because they're huge. This one is not, however, it is, I think it's a mandatory reading to become a booktuber. <laughs> if there was a membership card or a hazing ritual, you would have to read this book in order to start doing videos and posting them on booktube. It is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. And I have had one or another uh, format copies of this book, but this is the one I own. And um, it's not that long. It's not that long, but I haven't read it yet. Uh, Robert from Barter Hordes was joking that he's one of the last booktubers to have never read Rebecca, but I'm also in that group. So it's, I'm, it will be read. This one I'm gonna try to read this year. This is uh, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I've never read it. And I'd like to read this because I also have a few retellings. And here we go again, look at that. Light. So I wanna read that. And a beast of a book. This is, good gracious, 900 pages. And the print is tiny. Wait, that's not a good page. Look at the, look at how tiny, look at how tiny. I'm gonna, and there's no margins. I'm gonna have to read it with a magnifying glass unless I get another copy or get an ebook. It's Les Miserables by Vic, and it's so big, it's bigger than my head, see? It, it's so big, I'm gonna have to read it sitting at a table because it's not only big, it's heavy. I really don't wanna hold it up much longer. Um, I watched the movie. <laughs> I watched the movie with Hugh Jackman and Russell Crowe. Nobody should ever let Russell Crowe sing again. Absolutely horrible experience. My next category is anything by Toni Morrison. I have read three Toni Morrison books so far. I've read Sula a couple of times. I've read Beloved a couple of times, which is my favorite so far of Toni Morrison's books. 
And years ago I read Song of Solomon, but I actually want to reread that because it, I've misplaced information. The memories have gone out of my head. Um, these are the books of Toni Morrison's that I have so far. And I actually have a couple of copies of Beloved. I have a really old one and a fairly new one. Um, so I want to read all of Toni Morrison's books. And I just realized I had been hearing other booktubers talk about the Toni Morrison read-along. And I don't, I hadn't remembered um, a video with a read-along announcement for Toni Morrison's books. So I did my research on booktube. And lo and behold, Hannah at Hannah's Books is hosting a Toni Morrison monthly readathon. So they're reading, or we are reading, a Toni Morrison book every month. And the next book, actually, I think I just talked to Hannah today and she told me that the group is a little behind because of a lot of, you know, just stuff, life going on and virus issues and all that other stuff. So they're actually currently, I keep saying there, but now I'm in the group because I requested to be in the group and we're going to be reading Jazz by Toni Morrison. Um, if I will link Hannah's channel below. If you have not watched Hannah at Hannah's Books, get off my video and go look at her videos and look, look at her read-along announcement. Hannah is an extremely intelligent, wildly articulate, lovely woman, um, and she's got some great content and wonderful reviews. So come along with us if you'd like to read Toni Morrison's books. The next category is nonfiction, and I only have three of those so far. So far, This is one of the books I've had on my shelf for the longest. I actually had this in hardcover years ago. I unhauled it years ago and then found it at a library sale for a dollar in paperback, so I bought it again. And this was published in 1997. It is Personal History by Katherine Graham. And Katherine Graham, who led the Washington Post, um, I have wanted to read this book for years. I would love to do it this year. Of course, I'd love to read all these books this year, but that ain't gonna happen. I need to stop buying new books <laughs> and I need to start making probably some better plans and prioritizing. The next nonfiction is True Crime and it's one of the original um, true crime books that kind of set up the genre. This is The Executioner's Song by Norman Mailer. Again, look at this. Um, it's, it's over a thousand pages, uh, but I, I don't care. <laughs> and what I did, if you had seen in, in a couple videos, was it a couple of videos ago? I broke up with my Goodreads reading goal. So I don't have a specific number of books that I need to read. And a lot of the thicker books, the longer books, are the ones that are the most intimidating because what do they do? They cut down your Goodreads number of books you've read that year. So I no longer care about that. So I might actually get ambitious and put a couple of these big, giant, chunky books in my reading repertoire. Um, this is a 1976, summer of 1976, and it's the true crime story of Gary Gilmore. Uh, the last of the nonfiction books, and this is a shorter one, so it's not as intimidating. This is Harold Bloom's famous How to Read and Why. And I've heard good and bad things about Harold Bloom. This book was published in 2000, and I actually found this, again, at a library sale. I think it was for a dollar. And inside the front cover is an article cut out of the newspaper. It looks like... It's all yellowed, and it looks like it's from the Boston Globe, June 18th of 2000, and it's The Pursuit of Reading. Literary critic Harold Bloom samples the depths of meaning and lessons learned from great writers. So, fun, fun history of a library sale book. The next books are sagas. Some of them are family sagas, some of them are individual, um, getting to know yourself, uh, History, historical fiction, sagas. The first one is The Thornbirds by Colleen McCullough. If you're as old as I am, you'll remember The Thornbirds, the miniseries with Richard Chamberlain many, many years ago. This book was originally published in 1977. I was 11. And this was a miniseries on TV with Richard Chamberlain 
and Rachel Ward, I think her name is. This is the story of, um, set in Australian Outback, and it's the story of Maggie, who has a sexual love romantic relationship with a priest. Um, so I've, <laughs> yeah, here we go. They're, they're all pretty thick, so I don't know why I'm bothering to show you that. Um, I've had that forever, and I would love to read it. The next one I almost picked for my March of the Mammoths, and this is Alex Haley's Roots. Again, there's a little controversy surrounding Alex Haley and the background of this book in particular. Roots is a novel, but it was, uh, according to Haley, based on um, his descendants from slavery, familial um, legacy. And there was, there for whatever reason, there was research that possibly disproved that his ancestors were who he said they were. So people were criticizing the book, saying it was untrue. It's a novel. It's all untrue because it's fictional. It's made up. But I've been wanting to read this for years. And funny, but The Thornbirds and Roots are two miniseries back in the 70s, 80s, that my parents didn't let us watch on TV because it was either too controversial or inappropriate or whatever it was. Um, but I really want to read them now. This next one is a brick. This is A Suitable Boy by Vikram Seth. This is an Indian family saga, um, and it's a love story. It's Lada and her mother, Mrs. Rupa Mera, are both trying to find, through love or through exacting maternal appraisal, appraisal a suitable boy for Lara to marry. Um, this is over, four, this is 1,470 pages. I haven't read a book that long since last year, The Count of Monte Cristo was fewer pages than this, but I think it was over 1,400. And then the other longest book I haven't read since Seminary, which was over 1,300 pages. Yeah, yeah. This one is Annie Prue's um, Barkskins. This is a family saga about trees, um, woodcutters, and Barkskins is uh, another name for woodcutters. Um, this is set in the late 17th century and follows a family over time. Um, many years ago for the Critical Chicks book group, we read Possession by A.S. Byatt. I want to reread that because I didn't even finish that book at the time. I think I read it at the wrong time. The, the topic was, was extremely interesting, but I just did not, wasn't feeling it for reading that book. But this one is her book, Babel Tower, and deckled edges. Love, love, love that. Babel Tower is set in the 60s, and very quickly at the heart of the novel are two law cases, twin strands of the establishment's web that shape the story. A painful divorce and custody suit in the prosecu prosecution of an obscene book. That's all I'm going to read for that description, but really want to get to this. I should not, I'm not even going to bother saying that because I want to get to all of them. This one is Matterhorn by Carl Melantes. It is a saga of the Vietnam War. Um, I found this in one of the only used bookstores close to me. I think it was like $6 in hardcover. Not deckled edges, but hey, you can't win them all, right? <laughs> this one is, is more of a fantasy book. And I've had, again, had this book. I'm wrong. This is another one of those books that I had for years in hardcover. Never read it unhauled it, found it again at a library sale for a dollar. Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. Um, I'm not going to describe this at all, but it's been all over the place. But um, again, this is a hardcover. I'm going to have to read it sitting at the table so I can, I don't have to hold it up, but far bigger margins than Les Miserables. <laughs> Thank goodness. Now, one, oh, I've got one more, and it's, I put it at the bottom of the pile by mistake. Hold on, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Here it is. Um, Doris Lessing's The Golden Notebook. Uh, this is over 600 pages. Anna is a writer, author of one very successful novel who now keeps four notebooks. In one with a black cover, she reviews the African experience of her early years. In a red one, she records her political life her disillusionment with communism. In a yellow one, she writes a novel in which the heroine relives part of her own experience. And in a blue one, she keeps a personal diary. Finally, in love with an American writer and threatened with insanity, 
Anna tries to bring the threads of all four books together in a golden notebook. I've had this on my shelf forever. Now, the whole topic of bucket list books began because of yet another instance of owning a book or books, unhauling them, buying them back. <laughs> I have a problem. Why am I doing that? Maybe I should stop unhauling, but I've, I had owned these books for years. Tried to read the first one. Again, read it. I tried a couple of times to read it. It, it never clicked with me, but I could see the value. I could see, I, I got maybe a hundred pages into the first one and I tried a couple times and it just, it didn't, it didn't click with me. Why am I bothering again, do you say? Do you ask? Because I can't help myself. <laughs> the first one is Wolf Hall. The second one is Bring Up the Bodies. And the third one is The Mirror and the Light, all by Hilary Mantel all in hardcover. I, I love hardcover versions of novels. I, I look for hardcovers and I am gleefully happy that every single one, um, I lied, except for the first one, has deckled edges. <laughs> and um, why am I bothering to try again? Because I feel like it and because I really want to read the Thomas Cromwell saga. I really do, and I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna try it. Um, I don't know, call me crazy, whatever. This is my bucket list edition, and that's the whole, the, the Thomas Cromwell series by Hilary Mantel is the entire reason for this video, because I realized looking on my shelves, that book is really thick, that book is really chunky, that book is really long, and I conquered some really long books in the last year with The Count of Monte Cristo and Middlemarch and some others that were, The Goldfinch was really long. I can do it and any of us can do it. It's getting over the intimidation and it's that, it's almost that theory of you don't want to meet your heroes because quite often I've elevated some of these novels to a certain pedestal status where I'm terrified to read them thinking I'm not going to like them and what happens if I've had a book that I've wanted to read for years and I don't like it. What happens if I don't like these books and I've had them on my shelf forever? I'm going to be really sad. <laughs> and I think that is the major reason why I haven't really attempted to read these for a while or ever. So let me know in the comments below if you have any bucket list books, if you have books that you've held on to for years that are intimidating, that you've avoided for whatever reason, but that you really think you really, really want to read um, in the future before you die. <laughs> so write me a comment below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.